Hey guys, welcome back. I find baked stuffed pastries and dinner rolls a very more street and a healthy alternative to fried ones. I'm going to show you a very easy recipe that does not have much baking science to it. Plus, you can adapt it in many ways in your own homes. For the filling, use a cooked shredded chicken and this can be prepared in many ways to suit the taste enjoyed by your family. You could keep it mild or use more cheese and even add a cream cheese to it or you can even spice it up with some hot sauce, chili flakes and jalapenos. When you egg wash the rolls, you can garnish them in so many different ways with sesame seeds, nigella seeds, thyme, oregano or even add some more cheese on the top. Considering the filling, I suggested eating it on the same baking day but you can also freeze them. Just remember to cool it adequately before freezing and before eating, thaw and reheat in the oven. We never have any leftover freezing in our house. So let's get cooking. We're going to first start by making the dough. And what we have the first thing is we're going to activate our yeast. I've got dry yeast here and I've got sugar. Sugar helps you to activate it. But what you need is warm water. Now, when you take water, don't take water at room temperature. It should be slightly warm, but not very hot. So if you dip your finger inside, it should just be a little warm, not very hot. And all you do is you add in a little yeast. A teaspoon of yeast is fine. Mix that together just to dissolve the yeast and then goes in the dry yeast. This is going to be kept for approximately 10 to 12 minutes for the yeast to ferment and literally double up in size and then we start with the dough our yeast is now fermented so i'm going to take my flour put them into the bowl make a little well in the center so i can pour my fermented activated yeast and here you can see that that is really double up in size it's nice and aerated and this will make the dough also rise after you ferment it and you get a very nice soft fluffy dough gently fold that in and all i will do now in this is add water but even the water is slightly warmed, so it's not room temperature and it's not cold, slightly warm. So that will help activate or work with the yeast better. I'm going to put water in tiny quantities, never all together in one go. It can spoil the dough or you can actually make the dough a lot runny, which you don't want or too sticky. So add a little water, mix up with the flour try and put it all together so literally like a very rough kind of a crumbly kind of a dough mixture at this stage and then a little more flour, water not all of it getting there and now for the rest of the water I'm going to gently mix that and you can see the dough is coming together well at this stage is when you need to get your hands involved and this is the best part of actually being able to do it with your own hands so i'm going to move the dough onto the table and if i need to add more flour i would add a little bit more i want to transfer the dough onto the tabletop
And now for the fun part is to mix the dough together. You will dust it very gently with a little flour. And all you do is put the dough together and make it into a smooth ball. The dough is still a bit sticky, which is perfectly fine. Just want to make sure you bring it together very gently and add a little more flour just to dust it with some flour and mix it together. Little more flour. And we're almost ready to let this ferment. Yeah, the dough is now all set. I'm going to add a little oil in the bowl and let this rest for a good one hour. Same thing back. Little oil in the bowl. This prevents the dough from not sticking at the bottom. And also when it's fermented and you take it out, it is easy to handle it. Just rub it on the sides and your hands have got all the oil in it. So use that to literally put it onto the bread. Little There you go. Still sticky, but that is all fine. It's all going to go off eventually and become a nice dough. And with a cling flame. This will now rest for one hour for it to almost double in size. Keep it into a warm part of your kitchen. If it does not rise well within the hour, leave it for 30 more minutes if, if it needs it. For the filling for the bread, I'm going to do an onion and a chicken bread. What I have is basically I've got a chicken here which has been pre-cooked and I've chopped up into small, into small pieces. Uh, you can use boiled chicken or you have leftover chicken, just shred it up or cut them into small pieces. You don't want large chunks because you're going to roll the bread and you want it to have uh, smaller pieces. Too large will not roll the bread well. So I'm going to put the onion first. So I'm going to slice the onions first. I think I'd rather I'll chop it. Use the red onions because they have a better flavor, less moisture. They also look better in the dish. Uh, it's more colorful. The white ones are fine, but then white ones have got a very high moisture content. You don't want to make your filling to be quite uh, runny. Uh, I mean, I do love onions, so I'm going to put one medium size onion. I think when you cook it down with the vegetables and when you uh, put them in the oven to roast, then when you bite into it, it gives a very nice texture. So onions are going to be of two different types in this. I'm going to put the red onions. I'm also going to put in some spring onion. So I have a spring onion here, which the white part and the green part, they both will go into the dish. But first, just chop it up. When you actually have a green onion, you don't need to cook them for long. You literally add them at the very last stage. Uh, they are quite subtle in the flavor, but uh, it's the greens which give it a very nice color. And the white part, the bulb, gives it a, a very gentle kind of an onion taste to the dish. So that is done. Then I have a red chili here. Now this red chili is uh, the big fat red chili. These are not very spicy. They're more for color than anything else. Uh, you can skip it if you don't like it spicy. Or if you want to put it, you can put in uh, red peppers, green peppers, yellow peppers. So I'm going to 
to slice them up into thin slices just literally there we are and again these these are not the spicy ones these are much uh, lighter the more like peppers more like bell peppers coriander I'm going to chop the coriander and we are done the coriander will go in last in the dish because it's a light herb it gives a very nice aroma and also very nice color never cook your herbs and your greens your green uh, herbs put them at the very last okay to get started we're going to now cook the onions along with some chicken let's get our pan organized heat it up I'm going to add in this some oil. I use rapeseed oil, but you can use uh, olive oil. You can use uh, any neutral vegetable oil. That's perfectly fine. And by the time the oil gets hot, I'm going to add the onion. It is a, a decent quantity of onion, but I just think it, it tastes quite nice with the bread. It is basically onion and chicken and with lots of flavors in it. So I think onions work extremely well. I'm going to let that cook on a medium heat. I don't need to color the onions, just lightly saute them so that the raw flavors of the onions are removed. They should still be the bright pink and not really brown. This is almost done. Then goes in my cooked chopped chicken. You can, like I said, use a roasted chicken which you have left over, shred them up and add it in, perfectly fine. You can put any of the filling if you like. If you're not into non-veg and don't want to eat the meat or chicken, you can probably use vegetables also. So because the chicken is already cooked, I just need to lightly warm it up. I'm going to reduce the heat and then add in the red chili, the fat red chili. I know it sounds very scary, but adding things is so much of red chili. It's not really hot. We could have mixed that together. At this stage, on the low heat, I am going to add some cheese. I want it to be a nice, a rich, kind of a cheesy kind of a filling. So I'm going to use a soft cheese, a generous quantity of soft cheese. This will literally bind it together or hold uh, the filling together. And at this stage, I switch off the heat and just mix the chicken, the onions and the cheese together. It's literally switched off the heat. There's enough heat in the pan for it to melt the cheese down and put together the mixture, rather bring it together. Oh, it smells nice. Here, can you see that? It's forming into a, a, a little lump, like a mass. It binds together. I mean, you can add a bechamel sauce or white sauce if you have, if you want to add to bind it, but I just think the cheese does the trick. Then also when you cool down the mixture, uh, it holds shape quite well. So very nice and easy to fill inside the bread. And when you actually cook the mixture in the oven, it becomes nice and soft. The cheese just melts through. So when you eat it, it tastes quite nice. This is ready. In this, I'm going to squeeze a small wedge of lemon. It gives a very nice flavor. The sarnis, the citrus flavor of the lemon works well. I'm also going to add 
the spring onion at this stage, the fresh coriander leaf, and lastly, some mozzarella. I think mozzarella gives it a very nice string. So when you're going to cook the bread and when you eat it, you should string very gently. But again, this is all done when the heat has been stopped altogether. And all you do is just mix it together and let it cool to fill inside the bread. Here we are, the dough is ready. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? It's fluffed up so well. Now all you have to do is knock the dough, it's still a bit sticky, so I'm going to deflate it and then lightly knead it. So as you try and deflate it, all the air goes off. It's still sticky but that is perfectly normal. You see that? Like that. Slightly dust my rolling pin, but first I'm going to knead the dough and make it nice and smooth. Take off the extra dough on the side. I'm going to gently just finally roll it. Look at the door, it is so nice. Now all I do is I'm going to divide this door into half. And then again into half. And I'm going to further divide this door. I'm going to make it into three. This door I'll keep it aside. I'll use it for later on and just do with these six spreads and Shape it up into a ball. And I'm going to leave it aside under a wet cloth for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. Let that rest and then we do a filling for that. Rolling. To now roll out the bread for the chicken roll, chicken, cheese, onion roll. So literally, see it's rested up for a while and it has literally swollen up. So I'm going to spread that. A little more flour. The whole idea with this is to actually roll the bread into like a tortilla or a chapati or a roti and then fill it up with the, the chicken filling. Now I have got a chicken filling but you know nothing stopping you from trying to do uh, a veg version by putting vegetables, roasted vegetables or paneer or whatever you like to have at home. The whole idea is to now get this bread nice and thin. So same classic technique from inside to outside, you pull the dough. It's quite an elastic dough, so it does stretch well. And what I would do is, uh, I'm going to take in my hands and lightly just flap it like a pizza bread or a romali. 
So here you have the bread has been rolled out. Now it's time to put the filling. Now I'm going to shape this bread like you do a spring roll, the Chinese spring roll, where you have the sheets of flour and then you put your uh, filling inside and you roll it up and you deep fry it. Similar kind of a principle, but with the raw dough. So then goes, uh, here goes in my filling for the chicken roll. So that's chicken, is onion, is red pepper, some coriander, all mixed together, some cheese. Don't put too much filling, but don't even put less filling, otherwise there's no fun. So chicken done, I'm going to put in that some cheese. I've got a grated cheddar, so generous amount of grated cheddar. And I've also got grated mozzarella. I think when you, when it cooks, the cheese will melt. And when you break it open, the beautiful cheese is going to be just melting inside. There's also soft cheese inside here so now let's wrap the bread and see how thin the bread is but then you seal the edges you don't need to put any egg wash or water wash the dough is quite sticky it'll hold quite well and all you do is roll the bread and you get a very nice kind of a vegetable, sorry, a chicken and a onion bread. What I will do is I'm going to place this into a grease tin. So I've got a tin here which I have put a butter paper. I have greased it, I've oiled it on the sides and also at the base. So just easy for me to take it off when it's done. I'm not going to pack it very tightly because the bread will expand a bit. So leave it on the edges on the side, slightly loose. And I'm going to do a few more. The chicken and cheese rolls are ready. All I would need to do now is give it a little bit of egg wash. So the egg wash gives it a very nice uh, glaze and a color when you cook it. Uh, if you don't want to put an egg wash, you can also use just a milk wash. Just lightly uh, glaze it with some milk and it's fine. And before I put it in the oven, I am going to sprinkle some of the lovely cheese and extra dose of cheese on top and I think the cheese really helps this will slightly swell up or rise up as it cooks the cheese will just melt over it and a little mozzarella so this is going to go in a preheated oven at 180 degrees centigrade or 350 degree uh, Fahrenheit for approximately 25 minutes to maybe 30 minutes. Here it goes. So there you have my chicken, cheese and onion roll. I made it into a large piece but nothing stopping from making a small piece and serving it like a canapé or a cocktail. It will work equally well. What you can also do at home is you can actually make them raw Put them into a freezer and freeze them and whenever you want to uh, eat them put them straight from a frozen into the oven it'll probably take a little longer 10 12 minutes longer to cook but it'll be nice to have it nice and fresh and warm i have got hummus here with a bit of a chili sprinkle on top but you can have a green herb chutney or any kind of flavored meal along with this so make sure you guys try it at home make it for your friends and family and do not forget to put your comments on the section below so until next time, bon appetit and happy cooking. And I am going to dig in and enjoy my roll. Mmm. Wow. Wow.